Hi, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody out there and to our wonderful speakers here. Uh, Zuhaili, Dr. Zuhaili, Aisha and Julius, welcome to the show. Okay, um, thank you everyone for tuning in once again. Today is a special day. As you can see, I'm dressed in my traditional costume. It's uh, Deepawali Day and so I would like to first and foremost wish Deepawali Vartakal to all those celebrating Deepawali today. And um, if you're tuning in, please grab some snacks, enjoy your murupu, um, and any other sweets that you can get by and please be entertained by what we have today. Um, we will be discussing about why university is the best time of your life. So uh, first, let me give you a very short introduction. Now, whether you are at the beginning of your studies or at the very end, uh, I'm sure you have heard countless times that university is the best time of your life because you don't really have to worry about big financial commitments or uh, embarking on your career or um, waking up at 7 or 6 in the morning to be in class by 7. So many people associate university to being the best time of your life. Uh, however, not all students do so. Many of them do fall short and do struggle with their university life. So uh, viewers out there, if you are just tuning in, Please don't forget to follow our my, my Uni Raza Facebook and Instagram and YouTube channel. Please also feel free to leave comments as to uh, what was your university life yet. Uh, and if you have studied in Uni Raza, please tell us a little bit about your experience or ask any questions if you you uh, if you have any. Now uh, let me introduce to you our panel of speakers today, starting with. Uh, our assistant professor, Dr. Zuhaili Akmal. He is the chief student experience officer at Uniraza. We also fondly call him the chief wisdom officer. Uh, hi, Dr. Zuhaili, welcome to the show. Hi, Grace. Happy Deepavali, Grace. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so you are one of the main person at Uniraza. All students love to see you, they all know you. So let me just tell the audience out there a little bit about Dr. Zuhaili. Now, he is more than your basic salt and pepper shaker. Zuhaili doubled in various parts before he discovered art in high school. And that's when he realized this is it. So he now calls himself a civilized rebel. I'll leave it to him to talk about it. That never follows trends and is constantly marching to his own drum. So, um, Zuhaili was thrown into an unhealthy fascination with American literature, and it was only the time uh, before he actually found his way to New York. And he graduated from Syracuse uh, University, and this university, Joe Biden, our president of the United States, is an alumni of this university. Well, under the advertising gurus such as Dori Deutsch and Edward Jones, Zuhaili obtained a degree in advertising creative and minoring in English and textual studies. Right after his graduation, Zuhaili stayed in New York and joined McCain Erickson uh, and worked his way up as to be a art director. And he worked on various accounts like Mastercard, Crate and Barrel, Avis, Briars, to name just a few. He was also uh, involved with Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week. So uh, to top the cake, he also was the finalist for Kane's Lion twice and bagged three goals and won Best Show from the Advertising Federation of New York. Um, to put a topper on that cake, he was chosen as one of the top 10 art directors in the States in 2009. So you can see his creative works is, is really out there. Uh, but after eight long years in New York, he decided to come back to Malaysia to become an educational advocate and a creative consultant. In his free time, Zuhaili plays the organ and occasionally finds comfort in movies by M. Night uh, Shyamalan and Quentin Tarinto and Joko Anwar. So again, currently, uh, Zuhaili is burning the candle at both ends as the chief student experience officer uh, for the School of Happiness at University Tun Abdul Raza and also the Director of General Studies. That's a long credential, but 
all well deserving. Dr. Suhaili, welcome to the show again. We are so happy and honored to have you over. Uh, thank you for having me here. No problem. Okay, speaker number two is Miss Aisha Arifin, uh, a student of ours and also the Vice President for Students Representative Council at Uniraza. She is an active member um, of Uniraza Toastmasters Club, uh, was a member of Raza Rangers. Hobbies and interests include uh, prompt writing, singing, and hosting mini events. So you will um, really fly past through today. And your motto is just do it. <laughs> okay, I like that. Right? So don't think so much, just do what needs to be done and just do it. Okay, welcome to the show again, Miss Aisha. Hi, thank you for having right. me. I'm glad to <laughs> no problem. All of you. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaker number three is uh, Julius Allen, also a student at Uniraza doing Bachelors of Arts, Government and Public Policy, final year student, um, and he is a Public Relations Representative Council uh, in Uniraza. So um, he has uh, got quite a lot going on on his plate right now because he is really active and he empowers and fosters students' participation in the university. Julius's role is very important in the university because he bridges that gap from students to uh, the admin team or uh, even the student rep, and he assists students who are facing problems. So basically, uh, he is really the, the person that you have to go to if you have some problem, any kind of problem uh, with the university or an experience, okay? So um, he is also an honorary committee of Raza Rangers, which is a official volunteering and service learning club at Uniraza. He is engaged in many NGOs around town that seeks to empower and tackle issues that causes social problems. Um, and he is really determined to fight injustice and to be a voice to all that he needs. A very passionate person has so much going on and still maintains a CGPA of 3.5 and above. It's something amazing and uh, good to shout out about. Now, he also is involved in social work, politics, and he balances his study life uh, quite well. But I'm sure, Julius, uh, later you will share with us that it's not... Uh, it's not as easy as a walk in the park. So sure. uh, later, okay. please do tell us more about your works, yeah? Okay, uh, the topic of today is 10 reasons why university is the best time of your life. And without further ado, I'm going to directly uh, shoot my first question to Dr. Zuhaili. Now, you have um, so much of experience, a vast exper experience, both locally and internationally. Uh, is it true that university life is the best moment of our whole lifetime? Why do people say or have that kind of thought? And um, we only spend what, two to five years in a university. So what is so interesting about it? All right. Uh, thank you, Grace, for the question. Uh, I always say that the university life is almost like a dating journey. You're getting to know someone and then you're kind of shy in the beginning and then get to know the person and then all the romance going on and then discovering the whole journey. Uh, if I can relate back to my university experience, I was humble enough and I got lucky also. I got a scholarship to study overseas. And then when I studied overseas, I still remember I was 16 years old in New York in a foreign country and uh, basically I don't know anybody at all. It's almost like venting yourself and also just to get to know people. And I remember during my university experience, I had so much fun because I was like making friends. I was getting new culture as well and just discovering the best version of myself. I always believe that the university experience is the one that's going to shape and fashion your whole life. Uh, it's almost like you're becoming the director or the storyteller of your life. You decide how your life is going to be at the university. If you felt like you're going to be come like just study all the time and just focus on studying, that's going to be your life. But what I did is that I still remember I told myself that there's a one 
it's a lifetime like a uh, chance so it's better for me to make the best out of it and i'm going to be the best version and i'm going to write the best story of life at university so to answer your question i do believe that and most of us at uni raza as a raza kill we do believe that the best moment in our life is always during university because that's the time that you don't have to pay the bills you have the freedom and you're discovering new knowledge and apart from that also even though it's only two years or five years this is the time that you're going to meet friends probably your best friend until forever because i still keep in touch with friends from the university and i felt like they are the one who know me the best hmm. a wonderful answer so that university is a time that you create that foundation to be the best version of yourself um i fully agree with that because i do think that university was the best time of my life because it was a stark difference from high school it is a time where we had to be independent where we had to think on our own feet where we cannot depend on our parents to wake us up for class and to uh do do our homework and things like that so it was really a time where um it grounded me and like you said make great friends until now lifelong friends you you get lifelong friends from uh from university okay uh thank you for that dr zohaili so let's go to aisha what does university life mean to you uh did you have any expectations before joining the university do you think that university would be really awesome uh and why did you choose uh uni raza to be a part of your tertiary education journey all right this great thank you for the question so the first question is what university life means to me so for me one word that i can share with all of you so meaning that signing up for a new city meaning that you are ready to be independent and responsible with all choices and you are going to that you are going to make in your daily life i believe and this is as well university life mean that you have the, an opportunity to create a chapter that you're going to reminisce in your future life to share with your children your granddaughter your grandchildren and i believe that university life there's a three things that i really believe what is shared by benjamin franklin he said that university is a place like liberty and learning and for me university life is the beginning of everything that i want to achieve in life i believe same to goals same goes to all of my friends that join university and it is a ticket to prove that we are capable of so many amazing things that we are going to look ahead in the future and to be honest i don't put expectation much in university life because i think i just i think that enrolling into university the first thing that i know okay you need to get a good grade you need to have a great cgp but at this current state what i can say that i really enjoy it is up to people how they create the chapter in their university life and it to be a plateau moment in life or to grab the opportunity to have a ride of roller coaster and mm. last question yeah so why did i choose this university you mean uniraza right to be part of yep. this journey <laughs> all right actually uniraza is not in my list actually to be honest but there's a reason why i enroll with the ultimate reason and the best reason why I enroll in Unireza. So one thing I like to share with my experience, which is one thing about my significant traits is I'm popular with that I don't like to wait. I really don't like to wait. So back then, right after SPM, I immediately enrolled to take a diploma that entirely focused in professional knowledge, which is called LCCI, 
London Chamber of Commerce and Industry International Qualification. And Alhamdulillah, I passed with a certificate with a three high distinction and two distinction. But mm. after that, I realized it's a really hard for me to enroll, to continue my study for degree or for first paper that I aim to take it, which is ACCA. Mm. At the same time, I was working. I was working at one of the audit firm to just to hone a skill while waiting my next opportunity to continue my study. And after that, one day my friend Imran Shah, back then he worked at marketing, uh, marketing department in Uniraza, and he was my senior at high school. And she asked me what what I was doing back then. So yada yada, I just finished study and looking place to continue. Back then I just know professional paper is just ACCA. And he shared with me something new, which is CPA Australia. And after that, we a meeting and he explained more and shared the brochure. And I took a week, I took a week to think, should I enroll it or not? So to answer your question, yes, I enrolled to Uniraza because of my goal, professional qualification that is offered. It's not about a university life or what, but I just, at mm. that time, back then, I enrolled for, I just think I focused to get a professional qualification, but I didn't know that university life is so happening. It's such a roller coaster <laughs> for me. I think that's up for me. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Aisha, for uh, that, uh, for sharing with us uh, how did you stumble upon Uniraza and what were you doing before this? Um, it's quite rare to have students who have uh, already studied or already started working and then wanted to seek a professional certification and then embark in uh, a proper journey in a university life. So I, I'm very encouraged that uh, you have shared. Uh, it is you had one goal in mind, which is to get a professional certification at Uniraza. But along the way, you stumbled upon um, other things like uh, social social skills. Basically, you uh, learned and you picked up uh, other skills that you would need definitely when you start working. So thank you again, Aisha, for, for that. And shout out to uh, Imran Shah out there if you are tuning in. Uh, thank you for bringing such a wonderful girl over to Uniraza. So, uh, to Julius, now you have an important uh, position, like I mentioned before, you are the bridge <laughs> in Yuri Raza. Yeah. So, um, as a public, public relation officer from the Student Representative Council, I'm sure you have met many students. You have met students with, uh, who have seemingly a great life at uni Raza and students who True. want to give up basically and they are at their worst times so could you maybe uh, share with us you don't have to tell us their names but could you just share with us what uh, is your experience dealing with uh, these two uh, students uh, these two different spectrum of students and what is their opinion about university <clears throat> life definitely so we've heard from our great two speakers, uh, Dr. Zoyali and also Aisha. Uh, thank you for sharing as well. Thank you to Miss Grace as well for inviting me over to this TikTok show. So when it comes to this uh, <clears throat> idea on how students perceive uh, the university life, I, I personally, I've dealt with many students. Some of them messages me, calls me, share me their problems, but honestly, not many are that open to tell about their personal stories, about their problems. To me, it's more towards an individuality issue. It's more towards how they feel comfortable in sharing their opinions, their ideas, or even their problems with the particular person. But to me, in general, Razakians are very, they're amazing. They're just amazing. They tend to be very supportive towards university programs, activities. They're very... Uh, interested in getting to know more about what can a cause, what can a particular cause give them a career path in life and towards how they can actually see themselves being a leader as well in the in the particular university. So there there must there is always a sense of determination and motivation in them. They when they when they tend to follow in their studies, they will find a resolution on how to cope up with it. Sometimes they would uh, 
come up with, uh, like I know a group of students, uh, I, like I said, uh, like what Ms. Grace said, uh, Ms. Grace said that sometimes uh, students face hard time, hardships in their life. So for example, a group of students who wanted to help out other students who were weak in the subject and they formed a study group. They, they call themselves Edu for All. That is a great example. They, they're on IG as well. Their, their members are very active in doing social works as well. So it's, it, it, you, don't have, you don't need a mass number or a big group of students to bring or, bring or, or to make a change in, in others' lives. But just a, a small group of three to five friends form a group and they did study uh, lecturing among themselves, me mentor-mentee program between they, they and the weaker, weaker ones who needed help. And from there itself, they've already inspired and helped other students in uh, achieving better grades. Those students who attended their mentor-mentee program, they, out of their own heart and soul initiative, their, their uh, results improved. And for me, that is a great example. And I am totally fascinated by this young bright, of, uh, young, bright group of students who took up such initiative, honestly. And uh, last but not least is how they perceive what they want in their life and in their future. Students nowadays, they, they, they're just hoping on uh, what can we get actually. But honestly speaking, uh, it's not about what we can get, but it's about what we can do for the country, what we can do for this nation. And which is why I really encourage, uh, encourage youth around me, especially my friends in university, to be more active, not just in university programs or in their studies, but also to venture into outside curriculum activities, for example, like joining social works, uh, NGOs, or even uh, being part of uh, political uh, platforms where they, their voice can be heard. Most importantly, their ideas and their voice can be heard because I know the youth are the future leaders of this particular country and together we can actually improve how society works and, and we can build a better Malaysia. Thank you. Great. Great answer, Julius. I am impressed so with, uh, with, with, uh, with you and, and how you perceive university life per se and how you encourage the students to step up beyond their comfort zone and to actually get involved mm. with something uh, which is a bigger cause, bigger than themselves. So uh, congratulations mm. to you and, um, you and so also much, how you handle things. Yeah. Uh, right, so that is from the student side. Let me go back to Uni Razak side. All right, uh, again, our uh, CSEO, Dr. Zuhaili, is with us. And he, um, I, I, yeah, I would like to ask you, uh, do students come to you personally? Uh, I'm sure you have met some students. Okay, that smile tells me I think a lot of students go to you. Um, Tell us a little bit about what their thoughts are uh, about their journey in the university and how do you encourage them or motivate them to enjoy and gain more experiences and connection, um, especially during this time, Dr. Zohaili, where it, it, it's, uh, it's really not an ideal time that we have at the moment. So uh, please share with us your experience. All right. Uh, thank you, Grace. Uh, so if I can just bring back a little bit to Uniraza, basically the division of student experience at Uniraza is a bit unique compared to all the other universities because we branded ourselves the whole division of student affairs as the school of happiness. If you see at other university or public university or private university, usually the student affairs are very serious, a little bit like almost like a little bit stiff. But what we do at Uniraza is that I have to give shout out to my team. Uh, we have a very young team and a very fun team. So uh, what we like to call ourselves are the happiness heroes. Uh, so the first time you step at level 10 at the Unirazak building at Jalan Tumraza, you will see a big uh, street art that we commissioned one of the famous street artists uh, to do all the decoration and also the interior inside there. It's an open space and also at the School of Happiness at level 10, you'll be able to even watch Netflix because all the students will get subscription to Netflix once you are at level 10. So uh, most of the students, they will meet with my team, the happiness heroes, uh, and shout out to them because they are the unsung heroes, to tell you the truth. Uh, they will be almost like the guiding light for the student and making sure that each one of the right side to have the best experience. And most of the students, to tell you the truth, at first, they are a little bit apprehensive, they are scared, which is normal. 
like I said before, it's almost like dating someone. We kind of like have our walls up. We are a little bit careful. And once we get to know each other, we open up a little bit. And what we try to do is that we always make sure that to tell everybody, all the new Razakins that uh, if you have any problem, if you need any assistance, we are here. That's the most important thing because never keep to yourself because sometimes it can be a little bit lonely at a university. But what you need to know is that uh, it's not an alone journey. There's always someone that will be helping you, whether the happiness heroes or your friends or your lecturers or anybody, you never know. And for the second question how, on the encouragement or motivate them to enjoy and gain more experiences, uh, this reminded me of the late Rita Pearson uh, quote, an American educator, very famous American educator. She said that every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understand the power of connection and insist that they become the best they possibly can be. So what we do at Uniraza is that we try our best because we have went through the experience at university. Each one of the happiness heroes uh, already went through an university experience. And we do understand that. Uh, again, it's a journey. And the most important thing is that we believe that we don't want to create a cookie cutter Razak kit. We want you to unleash your superpowers to become the best version of yourself. So we wanted to embrace you as an individual. We don't want to tell you, you have to be like this. You have to fit into what the norm is whatever it is, because we always believe that each one of you are unique in your own way. And we wanted to shape and fashion each one of you to be the best version of yourself. That's the most important thing. So the best way that we always motivate or encourage Razakin in general, basically saying that the most important thing just to have fun. And second, if you need any help, just come and drop by at level 10, the School of Happiness, and we'll be there for you. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Zuhaili. Um, I like your number one rule is to have fun. And, and that is something we definitely need to do at the university, both students and lecturers and admin all alike. Um, I also like the fact that you said that we are not here to create a cookie cutter Razakian. That means we are not here to mold you to be uh, a certain person that you have to be. But we are here to unleash your potentials and uh, to be the best version of yourself. So basically, um, I think with a great leader like you, um, our students definitely have an avenue, um, have the whole team that you are heading, the School of Happiness, um, uh, and the whole level of level 10 that the students can go to uh, in, if they are facing any problems, um, not even just with academic, but even with trying to get into a social group or trying to fit in um, and I'm, I've seen you firsthand going uh, going the mile to help students. So again, uh, we definitely do things a little bit differently at Uniraza when it comes to students a bit. So um, there are some comments here actually because of uh, what Mr. Julius has said just now. Uh, your friends, I believe, are telling you to smile a little bit uh, wider, Julius. You look a bit um, stressed. So please, your um, let me see who. Wolf Hype, yeah, uh, has asked you to uh, put a big smile. He said you're doing great. <laughs> and then there are um, other comments that I can see um and proud to be one of the Uniraza students uh oh there you go there you go julius if you can see this chat put on a big smile <laughs> um yeah some says one okay i think um yeah the audience can read their their comments as well and you can read as well oh wolf hype also says julius is very important yes okay now uh <laughs> let's not talk about julius so much let's no, go to aisha <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, Aisha, now you um, are the vice president and also a student in the accounting program. Um, not very easy responsibility to handle, but I can see that you really enjoy your journey at Uniraza with a bright smile on your face um, and with, uh, with me seeing you running around the university. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what is your role in the Student Representative Council and the objective of SRC for other students um, in the SRC? 
and how can SRC contribute some values in the student's journey while they are studying? All right. So the second question is about my courses and what I'm involved. Basically, this year, yes, you are right. Mm -hmm. To be an accounting student and to be SRC members at the same time is not an easy job, especially during mm -hmm. the pandemic. I think I signed up for SRC for the wrong year, <laughs> but <laughs> I learned a lot. I really enjoy it because the great thing that I've been blessed with the team of SRC this year. And I really glad to have Julius, Sophia, and Hanisha, as well as Elijah Ray in my team. Right? They are very mm. helpful. They we always communicate. We don't one thing our rules is we don't watch out. We immediately sign out to the our Google Meet and immediately if any discussion, okay, Google Google Meet to discuss and draft something on rubric so to make sure that in Chief Fauzi I was wiser we get what we discussed entirely. And yes currently I'm vice president, elect, elect vice president and I know accounting is hectic but at the same time to concern about other transactions is a hectic as well. So to be honest, I enjoy it. So you said about extra responsibilities, right? So for yeah. me extra responsibility, extra experience, extra fun extra networking and mm -hmm. it's not just networking between friends but working between employers at Unirasa as well. I'm really grateful that I know previously I stood from Datin previously and then after that moving forward in year 18, 2019 I I met Miss June. She's a really cool the reason why I managed to be at this level and at the same time I know a great thing that how to manage an event and to communicate well with other employees is Dr. Zhu. He's just an easy person to, to, to discuss to and yes I'm grateful for that. So my role in student is a difficult for a student out there. So my role as a vice president is to assist our president, Sophia. So she's currently in for Indian, so I'm joining this one for on behalf of Dave and to make a quick decision whenever something needs to be done immediately. So I'm assisting as to draft a plan for every semester. And the most important thing is to make sure that it is not just planning, but we need to ensure that it's executed in timely manner whether it is physical or we try we call it a backup plan to do it online. So nothing is impossible, just do it. I, I believe that so much, just do it. Uh, a lot of people that can help us with that. So supposedly, supposedly that we are being on every semester that we will have a significant event that involves all Razakian. I really love to see a new students and senior students because with that during the event we can networking they will know each other and then they will have opportunity to climb up to take a role for leadership role in Unirat. But with this new normal SRC shift our objective. So the first one is to create a mini and interactive activities with other Razakian as the mission is to keep engaged with other Razakian. So one of the, the examples that we did is we create a trivia at our Instagram story. So a lot of students, we just do it. Basically didn't plan, but it's just impromptu. And students love it. Students learn more about Unirat that when we do a trivia at our Instagram story. All right. So I believe that the last question is how about the SRC contribute the values, right? Student journey when they are still studying, right? So the value that I believe SRC, seen the previous SRC as well, wants to instill for a student is to instill the value of opportunity. The value of opportunity that students should gain during their, their study life. So we have that, that kind of responsibility to 
Razakin involved in every event that Unirazak you know, handle, that SRC handle or other clubs handles. So, but for other student association, uh, this term SRC managed to instill the idea of collaboration to work on something. I believe that working independently, that's not effective as collaboration. So one of the example this year, SRC managed to pull out an event, uh, which is, we don't know, it's 50-50, either we can make it or not, is Hari Merdeka event. So where we managed to, where we managed, where we managed to get the 20 committees to brainstorm the float activities, games, and how, who to invite, is the where is the event with we want to do it so you know make it happening with the online meetings so all of these things we never need meet each other and i still believe just do it we managed to discuss it through online meeting and so for us for src this year is either go big or go home either we do something or do nothing so i hope that rc this year managed to set, set a path for the clubs to continue collab with other with others ideas, employees either within Raza or other clubs or external to create greater impact for Razakin so that the Raza can feel uh, what is truly what is truly to be a university to students, what is a have opportunity to meet new people, to, to create a new relationship with other people mm -hmm. and i believe yes i think src held a very important idea in raza to bring all razakians together in raza all Thank right you. Thank, you. Thank you so yeah, much aisha for sharing those valuable uh, insights as to what src does and how important it is to have a student representative council uh to be able to uh connect students uh, with uh, the university and as well as an avenue for uh, kind of like a two-way communication and thank you also so much for all the activities the effort put in so that you can bridge that gap so that you can continue to get student engagement and continue to get students interested in their student life uh, i believe both of you play a huge role in students uh, journey at uni raza so the university can only do so much, but it is students uh, like you from the SRC that really gets the momentum going, really connects with the students and create that experience. So, um, yes, and I would like to uh, turn the attention to Dr. Zuhaili on our part, uh, Uni Raza part. Now, Uni Raza is a city campus, they say, and it is definitely, it's located just 10 minutes from KLCC. So we can imagine that there is actually not much space or less facilities for us to have um, uh, like badminton court or a field or even a park that they can, you know, stroll about after their classes. Uh, with this limited facilities, how can we or what kind of experience do we actually provide the Uniraza students? And in what sense would they enjoy their time at the university being a city campus uh, university all right uh so basically university was built on the foundation of the city campus if we wanted to compare our university a little bit it's almost like nyu where nyu is in the middle of new york city and basically you get the experience of the whole city itself and Kuala Lumpur is the best of both worlds because you get great food at Kampung Baru. At the same time, also you get like great shopping at uh, Syria KLCC. You get like great parks as well at KLCC Park. And then we have the best mama food at the Intermark Food Court as well. So we are in the middle of everything. The great part about it, even though we are vertical campus, we don't have that much spaces like any public university, but we do have a lot of heart and soul. So the moment you step in at Uni Raza, you will see a big street art of Tun Abdul Raza. And we always tell each one of Raza kin to embody uh, Tun Abdul Raza because Tun Abdul Raza is basically the rebellious, the civilized re rebel during his time. And we wanted to create the next civilized rebel, the doers, the innovators, the trailblazers, uh, and hopefully like 
probably the future rehasting like the CEO of Netflix or Elon Musk from Amazon and all that. So we wanted to create all those great uh, leaders in Malaysia. Uh, what do our campus offer is that we try to approach a lot of like young startup, like for example, like Beam. We are one of the first uh, university that collaborated with Beam, a digital, uh, basically transportation that students can use to go around the city of KL. Apart from that, also uh, we also collaborated with Socar. So for those students who actually take public transportation, if you decided to have a road trip around KL, you can actually go just walk two minutes away to a car and rent a car and drive around the city. At the same time, also, how many campuses that you can say that you have Netflix on campus? So while waiting for in-between classes, you can actually pop at level 10 to watch Netflix. So we try our best to collaborate with a lot of partners and trying to make the campus a little bit livelier. So sometimes uh, if you drop by a campus as well, you will see our library is the first non-conventional library. Usually if you go to library, like I always say that it's almost like at that end, it's like nobody there, or maybe student will go there just to uh, go on dating or whatever it is, because it's so quiet at any library if you go to. But at Uni Razak Library, it's so noisy. Everybody is having chit chat because we believe that a library is supposed to be where you can feel free to play chess or you can actually drink a Starbucks and then while doing homework and discuss with your friend. If you decided to go for a quiet room, we provided a quiet room for you to study. But we believe that each one of the Razak can, if you go to the library, we wanted you to be able to be the best version of yourself. Again, don't feel restricted and all that. We are also the first library in Malaysia and in the world actually that doesn't have any book censor. So basically, if you walk into the library, it's an open space and we got inspired by Google and also from Stanford Innovation Center. So you will see uh, there's no book censor at all. So the first time I remember we suggested to the librarian, the librarian hated us because the librarian was saying that, oh my God, we're going to lose all our books and students would be able to take books home without returning it. And then what we did is that we experimented for three months and then we realized that when we empowered our students, nobody will take the book. They felt like they have to return the book again and they felt like nobody is trying to be the disciplinary teacher. So that's one of the concepts that we felt like we experimented with well and we able to do it. Uh, we always hold all the Razakim, we always look up to our CEO in Cik Amir, uh, Izam Hamza, who always say that it doesn't mean that whatever we have done for the past 10 years is the best thing to do. So sometimes the best thing is that to experiment, to try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, it works. Uh, for example, during this, the new normal post COVID-19, uh, what we just did recently with the onboarding. And if you can see also, uh, I'll show you a video of our traditional onboarding over here where we bring students outside. So the onboarding where we take students outside is that in the video, which you can watch, uh, basically we take the student on a road trip. Usually within the first week or what we call the uh, Uniraza Freshy Week, uh, we always take students outside instead of spending time on campus. Uh, as the video is showing right now, we took our student to Panko and Lumut. And then the student will have the experience to experience the nature and they are stuck in a bus for four to five hours to go to Panko. And the whole bus, you are sitting next to strangers, you don't know each other. Uh, you will see the mood, the vibe, the ambience at first. Everybody was a little bit shy, don't want to talk to each other. But after you got stuck for a while already with each other, you started to uh, open up and then you will hear someone singing with their guitar on. And then they will, there's no cell phone at all, no social media. Uh, we confiscate all the cell phone because we wanted to focus on the power of connection. Because sometimes, how many of you guys realize that whenever you are eating at a restaurant, Nobody is talking to each other because you are so busy checking on Instagram or playing with TikTok. So what we do over here is that it's all based on connection and everybody will get to know each other very well as well. You can see Aisha over there during the Outward Bound School as well. And then they have to spend the day over there during the nature and then do, waking up early in the morning, doing exercises at the same time, also doing all this team exercises. Uh, 
the next day also what they have to do is that you want to take them outside of their comfort zone they have to learn how to canoe and basically they have to canoe for like almost uh two to three hours uh they will learn the basic of it the instructor will be teaching them for them to go to Teluk Segede. Teluk Segede is a private island that is reserved only for junior Azak students. Uh, so they will, over here, they are learning the basic 101, how to do it. To tell you the truth, most of the students, because they live in the city and probably they are from the city, they never experienced the outdoor part. And this is the time they have to work together and they have to canoe for two to three hours. Trust me, it's not the easiest thing to do, the kayaking. And basically, they kayak from uh, Lumut to Teluk Sikir. Uh, so basically, I'm on the boat because <laughs> I'm not very good at can, uh, kayaking. But I also experienced with the student after that. And then once we arrive at Teluk Sikir, they have to set up their tent and they have to cook from scratch. And you'll be surprised. A lot of people don't know how to cook. I have even like some of the girls asking me how to cut onions and how to cook and stuff like that. So this is the time that everybody is helping everybody. And trust me, there's no toilet. Everything is like back to the nature. So you are stuck with each other. So you are having fun. So this is one of the traditional experience of our onboarding experience that we did during orientation. Instead of spending time at campus, because you'll be spending time for two to four hours, uh, four years. And basically what we did is that we take the student outside for an outing. So we did it in 2018 and 2019, but unfortunately during 2020, because we were hit by the pandemic. So what we did is that the recent onboarding, we kind of play with the virtual uh, onboarding and we still have fun. Uh, people always thought that the pandemic is hitting Malaysia, it's a bad thing, but I always believe that. And we at Uniraza always see a light at every single hardship. So we believe that uh, there's a blessing in disguise because even though with technology, it will, it will not restrict our onboarding experience. Uh, another experience that I would love to highlight is that uh, what we love to do at Uniraza is that we always believe that we wanted to create, uh, hopefully one day, someone who's like a civilized rebel, who innovative, but at the same time also have kindness. Because we always believe that character does matter at Uniraza. At this moment of time, a lot of people always say that social media is taking a front seat and kindness is taking a back seat. So what we wanted to do is that with each Razakin is that with the recent project that we did with Project Local that I'm going to show the video over here as well. The Project Local is a compulsory element for all the students. Basically, we took 87 students to work at the PPR, the People Housing Project around KL. So we approach uh, people housing project at Tiwansa and some of the other places of the city dwellers in Kuala Lumpur. So what the student did is that it's a semester long project. They become a consultant and they consulted the city dwellers and it's a collaboration between Union Raza and Ministry of Federal Territories. So we went to Ampanghine, Gombak City, Sri Tunggano and Tiwansa as well. And the student has to approach the problem that a real consultant from a senior citizen aspect, from educational aspect, from social aspect, and more uh, other facets of the city dwellers, the problem they are having. The great thing about this is that we are taking the students to the community and engage with the community because we believe that sometimes because we are so busy being in the class, you kind of get carried away with the textbook and then you just become a book smart. With this type of project, what we are doing in one of our classrooms is that we are trying to balance between the book smart and the street smart because we do believe that you have to have a balance of that in order to survive in the current world. So you will see over here, students are working really hard to make sure that the life of the city dwellers from different aspects are being focused. So there are the four aspects, the social problem, community engagement, living condition, and also the senior citizen engagement. So there is an opportunity and also a great uh, experience for students. It's very humbling because one, you're able to interact with the community. Second as well, it's taking the student outside of their comfort zone because sometimes we do take granted for things. Like for example, we will go to Starbucks and spend like 15 ringgit on a frappuccino without realizing that sometimes there are people at uh, probably living in the city that probably cannot afford that. 
they don't have uh, the blessing that we have in life. This is a great opportunity also for students to just interact with the kids and hopefully to inspire them, saying that education is the one thing that can change your life. So uh, yeah, these are some of the great experiences that you will be able to experience in Uniraza, as you can see. Uh, but I'm sure wherever you choose to study, the most important thing is that remember that you are the storyteller, you are the director of your life, and you decide how your life is going to be. If you felt like your life is going to be like uh, someone who actually give back to the community at the same time, also having fun at the university and also studying hard, I felt like Uniraza is probably the best fit for you. If you felt like you wanted to just study hard, you can uh, just choose those Ivy League University in Malaysia. But remember, each one of the university have their strength point, and our strength point is that we try to cover almost every single facet. And again, what we like to stress at Uniraza is that we wanted you to become the best version of yourself. Okay. Right. Oh, thank you. So so highly for zooming in detail about what exactly do we expose our students to. Uh, it's not just about studying, it's not just about city life, but it's also bringing them out. It's also uh, putting a lot of input in them, giving a lot of purpose of, of life, um, really exposing them to the bigger purpose of life. So um, definitely a huge responsibility. Now, I'm straight going to get some questions from the audience. There are uh, quite a lineup of questions already. Uh, before that, uh, Tara wishes everybody happy Deepawali. Uh, World Peace Fighter also wishes everybody Thank happy you. Deepawali. Uh, Zul Husni as well gives his Deepawali wishes to everyone who's watching and to Julius as well. Okay, coming back to the question. The first one is from okay. Anas Saleh. Okay, let's wait until the question pops up. Anas Saleh, what is your opinion about the future academic in university after post-COVID uh, change reality? I believe this question is for Dr. Zuhaili. What is your opinion about the future academic in university after post-COVID changed reality? All right, uh, that's a great question. Uh, like I say, is that in life, there's two ways of to approach in life experiences, whether you wanted to be defeated or you wanted to find a light in that experience, a blessing in disguise. I always believe that the higher power God in some sort of way will not give things that we cannot um, face. And especially with the hardship of post-COVID is saddening because it's hitting every single aspect of life in Malaysia or even around the world. But the most important thing is that I do believe that this is the great time evolution for academy in general. Because if you notice, what we've been doing at the university is almost like a few centuries already we've been doing it since Socrates' time. Basically, what we study, the way we study is the same method that we are studying back in the 15th century or the 14th century. Again, by having the post-COVID, even with all the sadness that is happening, it is kind of a blessing in disguise to education in general because we are pushing the envelope and we are pushing the envelope from the aspect of teaching and also learning. Students are becoming more depending on technology. At the same time, also, we are trying to find innovative way how to approach learning. So again, my opinion about the future of academy, I felt like is a great, future uh probably not like what was in where we're going to see flying cars but i think we are getting there where we're going to see great innovation we're going to see great learning for example at uniraza when COVID 19 hit within uh the first week the whole academic team we kind of rally up and we say that hey let's focus on our europe which is our learning management system and try to give the best uh, service to the student. To tell you the truth, it's not like a bed of roses. It's not easy at first. We're not going to get it right the first time. But what we try to do at Uniraza or everybody else at the university, we always believe that our intention is that to give the best experience to our student and to make sure that learning doesn't stop. Like Nelson Mandela said that education is the only thing that can change your life. And we believe that education is the only thing that can change each one of you. 
outside there. So that's why we believe that education will never stop. And that's why we believe that we have to evolve in some sort of way. We cannot go like through the traditional face-to-face -face, uh, classroom setting. So right. that's Thank my opinion. So yeah, yeah, wonderful, wonderful insights. Um, now, very quickly, I'll go to the second question. I believe um, uh, Dr. Zuhali would be the best person to answer, but uh, students, feel free to add in your thoughts here. Yeah? Uh, so, Mr. Wolf Hype asked if university is going to choose our jobs. Because quite directly, when you choose um, a degree or you choose a program at the university, you will, you, you kind of have an idea of what you want to be. And um, the lecturers or the university would definitely put in content that is related to the career that it is heading to the pathway. But does university really choose our jobs? Uh, Dr. Zuhaili? Or probably we'll give to yeah, Julius yeah. or Aisha. Yeah. 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 What do you think? Yeah. Probably we'll give it to Aisha to Julius. The lump situation <laughs> over there. <laughs> All right. So the question is, uni is university going to choose our job, right? So first okay. of all, when you go into university, right? So you already have a sort of mindset that you want to enroll. For example, for me, you want to enroll for accounting. So basically, just accounting is just it's just an idea of it. But behind that, there's a lot of things that you guys can explore and it's actually the agency is not going to choose our job but university just for me I mean, because i'm already a final year student what i can say that we lay out the plan lay out uh, several options for you to choose on your what is the you because people i believe different people different students have different kind of uh, self-bringing Right, some of some of the are introvert, some of them extrovert. So it's up, it's ask yourself, okay, what, 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 what things are suit for me? This thing not going to take a week, a month, but eventually just do it, and sooner or later along the path you will realize that, oh, this thing is not suitable for, for me. Maybe this thing is suitable for me. It's just for me that it's not that. So the, the to answer your question, the university is not gonna to choose our job. It's it's based on our own. Remember that uh the first thing that I shared in my the, just now where I shared the university is an independent life. It's the time for us to be independent. Are we going to to choose what is going the best for us in future? So so it's on ourselves to be independent to choose. To be responsible what is our choice that can help us in future i hope that can answer the yeah. question yes definitely answers the question okay. quite straightforwardly um i suppose the university can direct uh can you can see the pathway but ultimately, it's your choice. Uh, for example, we have a living testimony, Dr. Zuhaili himself, who uh, studied, uh, <laughs> yeah, design. So, and now he's a uh, he's very much a um, educator, um, a consultant, and he is a, yeah our chief student experience officer. A little bit different from from what he studied. Right? Yeah, actually, Grace, I got my scholarship on computer engineering to study overseas. I oh. started off computer engineering. Uh, I was one of okay. those naive students when the government approached me, hey, do you want to study in the States? So I sold my soul to the devil already. And I was like, yeah, America, whatever it is, if, if you're going to send me to study plumbing, I will go to America. So they offered me on computer engineering, even though I excel well in mathematics, physics, chemistry, and all that, mm -hmm. I hated it within the first semester. Okay. So what I did is that uh, I I was I was very glad because I decided to pitch it to the government telling them, hey, I will complete my engineering degree, which I never mentioned to anyone. I have an engineering computer engineering degree as well. I told the government, what if I did trip double major and also a minor in English at the same time, if I can complete it within four years, they say, we don't care. As long as you can finish it within four years, it's fine. So 
to tell you the truth, the university doesn't dictate what you're going to be mm. after graduation. It's you and the power in you that is the most important thing. I even have like my ex student who study like fashion design and they're up becoming a flight attendant. They love to travel. So it really depends on you. And just to share with you also, at Unirazak, we never get things right as well. Uh, like for example, right now we are still improving on our postgraduate student experience because we believe that we have been focusing so much on our undergraduate student, but we never focus on our po postgraduate student. And we mm -hmm. felt like they felt like they stuck children at our university. So right now, what we are doing in 2020 and also 2021, we are trying to do a sub-branding to focus on our postgraduate student and working uh, very hard with Prof. Jamin, the dean of uh, the graduate school. So that's some of the example okay. already. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Right. Um, next question is from Ms. Tara. Uh, it's a fun question because uh, Dr. Zohaili, you mentioned dating just now. And um, <laughs> so she asked, and um, I, I think uh, Julius could maybe share some light uh, in this. Yeah. Do you think students can juggle studies and romance slash dating well? Uh, I started dating, she, she started dating her then boyfriend before university uh, and sometimes wonder if her results could have been better. Uh, they are married now, by the way, with uh, with a daughter. Oh. So, uh, do you, would you like to shed some light? Um, <laughs> please speak from experience if you have. I'm not sure I'm the right person to talk about this. Perhaps maybe Aisha, but it's okay. I'll give a try on myself as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, congratulations to Tara. Uh, the love of your life was found during university life, which is awesome. Not many people have have the opportunity to meet the person that they can connect, the person that they can actually understand and be there for them through all hardships and eventually get married even after university life. So honestly, uh, juggling these uh, two aspects of uh, which one to prioritize, is it the person that you care and love or is it your studies which will eventually determine your career, your path and uh, the future that you want? Uh, because I've heard as a public relations officer in, uh, in Situ Navarasa under SRC, I've heard stories of uh, how couples got into uh, fights and uh, got emotional and they even got depressed out of it because and it affects their studies. And honestly, not many people have the capability to juggle and to balance these two aspects. And uh, just a piece of my advice, perhaps, if, uh, if any of you would love to, to go into dating while studying, it's natural, it happens. Uh, not this type of things are unpredictable. The best things of life happens uh, without being planned, without us knowledge it about it, and it just happens. And no one can stop us. So, uh, what we can do best is to accommodate our time. Time management is very important, and honestly, I'm pretty sure you'll get it out, survive, just like how Tara did. And uh, that's how I feel my take towards how you can juggle a uh, relationship along with education on your side. As Julius, I couldn't have said it better than you. I think that's a great advice. Uh, takeaway is time management. Um, and, <laughs> and so to all of you out there, don't be discouraged. And, um, look, uh, yeah, the students are doing so well. Very proud of you for that answer. Okay. Yeah, um, Julius, anybody? Julius found a new calling. Julius found a new calling. <laughs> Julius can be a love guru now. <laughs> Maybe we need to open a small unit in SRC, uh, love advice, relationship <laughs> advice, things like that. <laughs> okay, right. Um, the next question uh, is a serious one uh, from Harris Isan um, at Hasni. Okay, so there are only 160,000 people worldwide that has CPA Australia. And Uni Raza is the only centre in Malaysia that integrates CPA Australia into their degree syllabus. Um, actually, there is no question here. I'm sorry. It is a comment. Uh, thank you so much, Haris, for highlighting that. Yes, we are a CPA uh, centre and we have uh, integrated CPA in our accounting degree. Okay, that wasn't a question. Um, I'm going to go on to... 
I think I'm going to go back to the questions that we have uh, before I go back to questions from the public. Okay, um, Dr. Zuhaili, uh, the highlight for today's talk is to know what are the 10 uh, reasons that um, that university is going to be awesome. The journey is in university is going to be a good one. So can you please tell us what are the 10 reasons? All right. I would say that the first one is the freedom. The second one okay. is independence, friendship, right. mm -hmm. knowledge, having fun, mm -hmm. the journey, the culture itself, the self-satisfaction, and then number 10 is being the best version of yourself. Okay, wonderful. Very well laid out. Now that is uh, from our yeah Chief Student Experience Officer. Now I want to know from the students, what are your 10 um, reasons why university is the best time of your life? Can we start with Aisha? All right, maybe I don't have right now maybe i have five or seven in mind okay no really problem no problem because we haven't finished yet that makes sense yeah right yeah. <laughs> the first thing the first thing i'm proud to have in the university life is to have a friend since foundation so mm -hmm. shout out to harris harris just now is commenting you know it's my classmates and another friend elijah nazura and i'm very proud of them because they are very high energetic people that like to involve in Duraza events right okay mm -hmm. second one is i like when joining oh, university yeah, life yeah. i like the idea of collaboration okay the idea of collaboration and then third one is to be of course independence that's why i believe when i'm and okay, the fourth one is really important i it's not just me to all of the students in Raza, please join student association Whatever club is BRS, BE, UIC, UPAC, BRS, BRS, Iran's arranges, yeah, to do live volunteering. Because by joining this thing, I believe uh, I develop myself. I develop myself much more than classes by joining the student association with friends and all. And the fifth thing is the last thing is what is it? <laughs> I, I think Still I just have finding more out. in my mind. That okay, no part. problem, no problem. Great, great. Uh, what about you, Julius? Yeah, for me, Aisha couldn't have put it any better. Honestly, it's friends. Uh, for me, I came in the university with, with, without any friends. And now my friends, my circle have grown to such a huge amount. And they're all very supportive. They're all so great. Friends is just number one. And second is about discovering your inner soul, your inner talent while studying mm. just like what dr zoeli have always mentioned the best to find the best version of yourself not many people can do it but me honestly when i first came in university i was a bit uh in uh dreamland perhaps i couldn't uh see what clear path what future i wanted but honestly the fi finding the best version of ourselves is very important and the great lecturers like dr zoeli himself and uh, many other talented qualified lecturers who bring that best person that best version of yourself out of the person and apart from that i can see uh, we can build a connection a network as what i have also said joining clubs association build our uh, reputation and uh, our strength in how we can communicate better uh, and also to spark creativity while uh, doing this while engaging in clubs and activities and association and discover our it and perhaps also because we 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 have a certain interest in ourselves that we want to portray and deliver that idea out being in club association can be a good option for us to uh, put ourselves up and last but not least because we are uni raza and we offer the best study life and honestly not because i'm promoting uni raza because i'm studying there but no it's because i personally have a very close heart to heart relationship with Raza Kins and Yuri Raza. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Julius. Um, it's, it's so good to hear uh, from the student side, and it's so good to, to, to hear that all of you. 
take full advantage of um, your university life and you gain uh, you try to gain the best experience that you can all right we're taking more questions and uh this question is uh, i'm sure dr so can um, uh, can answer this and then back by the students if they have any opinion on it right this question is from uh, muhammad mukmin he is interested to know what is the struggle of uni reza from deliver for delivering experiential learning to online learning with the recent COVID-19 pandemic? I think that is a great question. Dr. Zuhaili, you were mentioning something about UROX earlier, and uh, maybe you could try to uh, explain a little bit, but very briefly, because we have more questions coming up. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, when COVID-19 hit us by a storm, I think most of the educators at UNIRAZA has to transition from the traditional setting of teaching to online teaching. And to tell you the truth, not all of us are Marine Counter or the next MTVBJ. We also not used to talking to the camera and obviously working from home is not easy for all of us. So it's almost like a struggle for all the, uh, the academicians at UNIRAZA at first trying to adjust to the new normal. But the great thing about UNIRAZA is that we have such a great supportive student who give constant feedback to us and also the management from UNIRAZA who always encourage innovation. It started from some of the academicians started to buy a microphone and some of us even have like the ring light just to make sure that we have the glow like Mariah Carey a little bit and we just have fun. That's the most important thing. And what our vice chancellor, Prof Samsina, always say is that just imagine as if, if you wanted to give the best experience to your children or your relative, what would you do? So that's what most of us at UNORAZA try to do and all the academician try to do. So if I can answer Mokmin's question is that the biggest struggle is that to transition and to evolve. But what we happen to learn is that evolution is normal and evolution is fun. It's almost like the Darwin theory, evolution in general. Right. So it's all about adapting and um, and it's all about being creative in the way we deliver our programs. So I would like to hear from the students' perspective. Very briefly, tell us how has your online learning experience been so far? Do you want to go first, Aisha? Perhaps? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Julius. Okay. Oh, sorry, uh, Aisha, is it? Yeah, go ahead, Aisha. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Aisha? Oh, me. All right. Sorry, I, I thought think... you did. <laughs> Looking at her. All right. Okay, for me, experiencing online learning is like together. We, we take time together, actually. It just, it's just no rush, no fussy. It's just together mm -hmm. learning with the lecturer. We we help the lecturer how to uh, mm -hmm. managing the computer. Some, sometimes you don't know where to click and we assist them and they assist us. And I think it's a great thing that we on the same path level to to accommodate online learning and mm. it's just a great experience i think yes it's a little bit hustle but but just a new thing why not a new thing just mm -hmm. do it right okay okay <laughs> yeah great so yeah just try new stuff because your motto is just do it so okay so online learning just do it <laughs> yeah Good. Uh, Julius, you, how has your online learning experience been like with Unirazza? Honestly, it needs so much more motivation, so much more self-determination because not many people uh -huh. can handle online learning, honestly. And uh -huh. I've, I've also heard from my friends where they, the first few uh, weeks of online learning, they suffered terribly. They, like, just like what Aisha said, it takes time for us to adapt. But once we adapt, we're uh, actually on track back to how we can actually uh, make ourselves use along with the lecturers. And in the end, we uh, adapt to this new normal. So honestly, uh, key key point is self-discipline, self-determination, and also motivation. Because if these three are not there, we're, we're stuck. We can move on. So what is the most uh, interesting online activity or uh, that, that the lecturers have done with, uh, with, with you, Julius? If you can uh, think of honestly, it. yeah, I can think of uh, some. Uh, one of it oh. is uh, using uh, online platforms like Kahoot, where 
the where there is a historical game going on where mm. uh, this where where the lecturer use kahoot to to uh, put on okay. questions and uh, pieces just like what Aisha said yeah. earlier about trivia and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so stuff yeah, like you that. enjoyed that. Yeah. Okay. I that. Great. Um. Right. We we'll move on to the next question. Um. Uh, this is from Eric Ballen, one of our loyal listeners to our TikTok series. His question is, will there be a proper Uniraza Alumni Association to perpetuate the Uniraza brand and the uh, university, the UR University experience? Dr. Zuhaili, I think maybe you can take this question. Yeah, thanks for the great question, Eric. Uh, like I say, is at Uniraza, we're always experimenting. To tell you the truth, we never found the right formula how to target every single uh, demographic of the student. For example, we have undergraduate, we have a uh, working adult, we have postgraduate. I think what Uniraza has been successful in doing is that we have been great at targeting undergraduate alumni. But what we are moving forward for the end of 2020 and also 2021, we wanted to focus more on the postgraduate and also all facets and all demographic of the student. So what we did is that recently we just launched the Uniraza Alumni Association and we already launched it for the undergraduate student and for next year we're going to launch it for the postgraduate student and what we're going to do is that we're going to make it an element in our freshie week or our onboarding session for all new students that we will have a virtual, well, right now, virtual high tea with the alumni for them to talk to the alumni. And hopefully we can have more students from all demographic and more alumni to join in. But to answer your question, we do have a Neuraza Alumni Association. And by the end of this year, we're going to officially launch it. And hopefully all the Razakins and graduated Razakins can join in. Okay, good. That that's something positive to hear, and something that we really look forward to. All right. Um. Now this question is quite a relevant one because Uni Razak does not only cater for students who are fresh from high school, but uh, we also cater for uh working adults and those who wish to further their studies or continue their studies who have missed the chance of doing their degree. Uh, their degree. So with uh, programs like Appel um, and things like that, there are, we have many students who are already in the workforce. So um, this question is from Kyle Koo. Some people might find university life hard because they will need to work at the same time to sustain themselves. Uh, so what is your advice to them for those who, who have to juggle work, family, and studies at the same time? I, I believe uh, Dr. Zuhaidi would be the best person to answer. Yeah, sure. Uh, Kyle, just to share with you, when I did my master and my PhD, I was working full time. It's not easy. When someone tell you that it's easy to work and also study, trust me, we are not Einstein, uh, especially with deadlines at work and at the same time with assignment. But the best part of it is that to juggle it, you just have to put passion and just make sure you know what's the end goal is all about. And always make sure if you need any help, ask the assistance from the Uniraza, from in, any of the university that you are studying at. For example, at Uniraza, if you need assistance, what we try to do is that feel free to reach out for the happiness heroes. Because what we try to do is that we're not going to uh, talk to your lecturer and give like a longer deadline. But what we can do is that we can try to give suggestion and probably uh, help you with your time management and also how you can work it out. The most important thing is always communication. Like a relationship, communication is very important. It's almost similar if you're an adult learner or working full time. You just need to talk to the university or anybody at the university in order for you to have a smooth uh, journey at the university. Hopefully that answer your question, Ka. Okay, great. Um, now the next question is for Julius and Aisha because it talks about SRC. But um, it does touch a very interesting aspect. I see uh, SRC is active with our undergraduate students who are studying full-time. So again, from Eric Ballen, part-time weekend and postgraduate students actually do not feel uh, the same warmth as full-time students do at Uni Razak. So how does SRC plan to fix this and to be more inclusive of them? Uh, 
any thoughts, uh, Julius or Aisha, who would like to go first? Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll try to right. answer Mr. Okay. Eric's okay. last question. <clears throat> Honestly, uh, on this idea, on, on this uh, question of uh, how other schools and other uh, like postgraduate diplomas and also uh, like uh, what Mr. Eric said, uh, weekend students and even part time students, how can they be more engaging and more uh, feel and feel more uh, attached to the university itself? So, uh, previously in SLC, me, Aisha, with the president, along with uh, a few of student enrichment uh, staffs, we've sat down, we've also talked, and we've also spoken about uh, how we can actually reach out to all students of Inunaza, not just undergraduate, but also postgraduates and also part timers. Uh, what what we've planned to do is that whenever there's a program, we try to invite and try to get them along on board with the activity or with the program itself. But <clears throat> few steps have been taken. That's just the first phrase. But eventually, we will get into uh, how we can look into it deeper and how we can actually make it more holistic in order to get them on board as well and feel warm and welcome. Okay. Perhaps Aisha, you Thank can share you. more. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Julian. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, in my uh, in my view, I think in order to include part time a uh, diploma student actually as well that we are trying to uh, to get them to join our event as well as graduate. What we can, what we are trying to do right, we want to get. Uh, we want to get a followers in RC Instagram because this is where we blast a lot of information about student activities. Yes, obviously the the past four years, the past four years, five years, uh, we juniors at SRC just focus on under undergraduate, but for this year we realize that diploma student, where is a part time, where is a weekend and postgraduate as well because. They are, they are, they are rarely, we are rarely know them when doing the event. So what we're trying to do is we try to get all of the students from part-time, we can approach their it. What you guys can do to get engaged with us is follow our SRC Instagram, SRC Uniraza at Instagram. There is really, we want to get, we were really want to get engaged with part-time and, and postgraduate students. This okay. first step right. will help the student to join. Great. Uh, thank you so much because maybe uh, it has not been uh, on the table, but at least now would be a great time to start working on it uh, to see how we can be more inclusive of our weekend, uh, part time, and even our postgraduate students. Yep. So, but thank you so much for highlighting that, uh, Mr. Eric. And it's definitely something for SRC to take up that challenge and uh, to see where we can go from there. Okay, now, um, one last, I'm going to take one last question from the audience. And uh, uh, maybe Dr. Zuhaili can answer this. This is from Fauziana Muhammad. Does high CGPA help you to get brighter job opportunities? Well, this is my personal experience and also professional experience. I graduated from my college with 3.89 and I always believe that CGPA is everything. But when I went for job interviews, unfortunately, nobody really bothered to see my CGPA. Uh, I always believe that and I felt like a lot of my friends in the industry and also at Unirazza, we always believe that your character matters the most. Uh, yes, CGPA does help. But if you're able to brand yourself well, if you're able to pitch yourself well during the interview, and also if you seem genuine enough, people can tell. Because sometimes we do have students who are great CGPA, but probably empty and probably doesn't really show any genuineness. So what employers are looking right now, as we are evolving, employees are trying to look for someone who can adapt well and can evolve well, especially with the new normal. Uh, if you notice, a lot of industry are changing their game because we are not the same. Uh, how we work right now is not the same like how we work five years ago. 
we are keep evolving and especially the pandemic i felt like and also the industry felt like there we need to find a graduate who able to balance between their academic and also on their character wise i still remember reading from the world economic forum one of the thing they are saying that a uh, graduate should look forward to is to improve your power skills power skills basically are your communication skill how you carry yourself and the confidence and the maturity that's the most important thing so to answer your question i think cgpa help but there's so much that you can do with your cgpa what you can do is that try to develop your character and hopefully to get the best job opportunity out there Exactly. Um, I'm hundred percent with you on that, Dr. Zohaili, as an educator myself. And um, we definitely do not only focus on the CGPA, but we definitely focus on character building as well as uh, your emotional well-being. And um, and definitely, um, uh, IQ is quite overrated. People do focus on EQ nowadays. So uh, it's better to build up a all-rounder instead of just focusing on CGPA. So I hope that answers your question. And I'm going to wrap up the session, actually, because we've run way over time. Um, but I, I'm curious, uh, Julius and uh, Aisha, you guys are still studying, but uh, in a matter of time, you'll be graduating. I'd like to know what will you miss most when you graduate from this university? Maybe Julius can go first. Honestly, I would, honestly speaking, I would definitely miss the lecturers because lecture, the lecturers have been the sole heart of my achievements, my successes, the good results, the knowledge that I've gotten so far throughout studying in Yunaza. They shape my personality, the way how I perceive life is all about. The lecturers really had uh, this impact on, in me that, uh, that really shaped how I see towards life and uh, apart from the lecturers, I will also miss my friends. But like what Dr. Zoyali said, friends from university, some of them will end up being your lifetime friends. Still, the day you get old, you still hang out, drink coffee. And honestly, those are the two things that I'll miss most. Thank you so much. Um, Aisha, to you. Over to you. Okay, I think I agree with Julius, but to add more for that, what I really will miss the most when I'm graduating from Minnesota is I will miss the after class feeling to go eat with my friend. I think everyone does that, right? Mm -hmm. And then the and second thing is the feeling to celebrate the uh with the theme after the events as well. And then the feeling okay, one of the last thing I think everyone do this and we miss it for 2020 is the feel celebrate with the friend after mm -hmm. finance. Oh, that, yeah, the vibe. That that that's an awesome yeah. feeling. You're bringing me back to my back to time, and I start now missing my university life. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, guys, for sharing that. Uh, so, Doctor Zuhaili, can we listen to some uh, last words from you for the viewers out there for today? What advice right. do you uh, have for them? Yeah, sure. Let me just borrow the words of the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, and his address to the Princeton class of 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he basically uh, kind of drew out the difference between gift and choices. He said that cleverness is a gift, kindness is a choice, gifts yep. are easy, are given after all, choices can be hard. So just have fun. And the most important thing is that don't worry too much because university life is always the best time for you. It's almost like a journey. It's a self-discovering of yourself and to find the best version of yourself. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Zohaili. So um, again, to our wonderful panel of speakers today, thank you for availing your time on a public holiday. Uh, Julius, you are celebrating the properly as well. Thank you so much for you know uh, no coming worries. out. Uh, obviously, you are out of your house uh, to spend some time <laughs> with us. Um, and Aisha and Dr. Zuhaili as well. Um, I've enjoyed today's session. I've especially enjoyed hearing from our students. And uh, to our audience out there, uh, please, please uh, tune in. Don't forget to follow us on our Instagram, MyUniRaza, and Facebook, uh, as well as to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you will receive upcoming um, events and highlights. 
Now, Junior Raza November Intake 2020 is happening right now. So to apply, please go to www.uniraza.edu.my or call us at 0327891599. Uh, email Dr. Joe, Dr. J-O at uniraza.edu.my to get more information about programs at Uniraza. So uh, stay tuned for any uh, of our upcoming events. I'm sure we'll be organizing more talks such as this now that RMCO has been extended right up to uh, early December. Uh, please yeah. stay safe. Uh, don't forget your social distancing. Julius, I, I, you're outside, but it's good that you're maintaining uh, social distancing among yourself. Always. And... Always. Uh, <laughs> Please stay safe, everyone. Okay? Have a great weekend and uh, looking forward to see you all again. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in. Bye. All right. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Bye.